Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This is BSL 17, round of 16 of Group C. The last replay I have of the grouping, I presume whoever wins here advances. I'm not sure. Upper left hand corner, we got Ranker starting as the Browns. Or bottom right hand corner, we got Byax for starting as the Black Protoss. This is on Retro. Should be a fun one, four player map. Rancor stumbling quite a bit in game one. Zealots creating all, like Byaxer did a great job. I have to say that's usually where you can tell Protoss is gonna do very well against their Zerg opponent is when they're able to create chaos on multiple fronts and just have Zealots streaming everywhere, able to get into the drone lines. Even pulling drones off the line uh, for Zerg hurts because it's all snowball for Zerg. So if you can even force drones to not mine for a time, that means there's less that's producing. It's the ability to constantly produce that is Zerg's strength. Overlord making its way bottom left hand corner. Might be as far as aggressor versus aggressor. If Byax did go for more aggressive zealots on this map at cross positions, potentially can benefit. I think that ends up benefiting Zerg overall because that delays any sort of initial zealot activity. And then once you have sufficient amount of Zerglings, they're just so speedy that they can get across the map and maybe breach. And I think we might see a two gate here actually, because this gateway is not at the natural expansion. We're seeing a, a gateway, I believe that was on 10. So I believe this is gonna be an adjustment of Byaxer's play and the a 10, 12 gate as far as an opener here. Yeah. Interesting. And unfortunately for him at cross positions, he wanted it to be either to the north or to the west. At cross positions, it's going to be all the delayed, and that can be that can play a lot. And let's see if Rancor gets the scout. So sees the probe coming out. So he now knows that if it's not top right, it's yeah, that's a great shift on his part with the timing of this. And this is a massive, brilliant play from Rancor that's going to save him some time. And on top of that, that's going to allow him to scout that second gateway much more rapidly than typical. Let's see if he produces some initial Zerglings to help defend this. Sutton Colony's potentially warranted. If you survive this as Zerg, you usually end up in a really good spot. But seeing nothing at the natural and seeing a Zealot on the ramp, he has to presume that this is... So we got one gate uh, Protoss play. Baxter still not in the worst position. What he could do is pause zealot production on his gateway and go ahead and plop down a Vespin geyser and go for one base play rancor going ahead and dropping gas producing the amount of zerglings he believes he needs although he's pulled the drone off he's pulled the drone back and the overlord hasn't made its way bottom right so he's still going to be playing mostly in the dark and it looks like by Axer, despite having that natural expansion not scouted is going to persist with early game zealot play a third hatchery bra bravely from Rancor again. If he can manage to get that established, he does have enough drones out where he could outproduce by Axer. And again, you can just see how slow it's, how, how little time these, uh, or how long it, I should say, that was the reverse of that, how long it takes these zealots to make their way across the map. However, it is eight versus three, which is a winning scenario for these zealots. Rancor taking an initial hit, so he knows he needs to continue to build. Let's see if he drops a suck gun as well. Yeah, starting to queue up a something colony. Needs more Zerglings out on the field. And Rancor right now supply blocked, so needs to be a little bit careful. And Baya giving benefit to Rancor, allowing him to sit back and buy time, honestly. So it's going to be five Zealots, but there will be something colony up and more Zerglings to help greet it. And also that third hatchery is going to establish. That's going to be all the more larva potentially for Rancor to work with. Eating a bit of damage right there, trying to draw the Zelts back to the Sunken Colony. Do we have, we do now have a, an Assimilator and a Stargate behind this. So three hatch play for Rancor. He does have gas mining. He has not made his way to Lair. He does need to think about Corsairs eventually. And this kind of goes into the same sort of concept where it's like two base versus, or I should say three base Vergs versus two base Protoss, is you need to be careful because at certain, in certain like pockets, that's what makes this, this matchup interesting. In pockets, Protoss 
can outscale, but in other pockets, Zerg outscales, depending on what the tech is on the field. A scout being produced by Biagster. Interesting. Zergling speed being upgraded behind this. A Hydralis den, however, is being constructed. And the Zerglings flooding out to the north. They're trying to find these zealots out in the field. No second gas, by the way, for Rancor. He is still mining all the gas up front. Is no Hydralisks as of yet, but has a lot of larva to queue them up with. The zealots making their way all the way back. And that is, they can go ahead and camp for a time. Few of them getting wiped out. Rancor going to, attempting a run by, but recognizing there's nothing here. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and exit. Is he just going to go for the trade and engagement? Bias showed some really good micromanagement prior. It loses a Zergling as he pulls the rest of the Zerglings out. The scout starting to make its way across the map. But some Hydralisk... Rancor's got the, the air timing down because we do have Hydralisk being produced. And then granted, the scout can shoot ground, so that'll force the Hydralisks out of position, but it doesn't take a lot of Hydralisks to take down a scout regardless. The Zerglings flooding down. They want to make sure that they can deny this natural expansion. This is still a lot of Zealots. A little bit of initial scout there from Rancor. And if he can engage the Zealots in different pockets, that would be absolutely huge. The scout making its way towards the main. Yeah, so able to get the flood and wipe out the Zealots while the rest of the Zealots are sitting in the main. Scout's there working on the Overlord. Are the Hydals going to get there in time to help defend? Looks like that's at least going to be one dead Overlord. It's not going to hurt Rancor too much. Yeah, now, and the other problem for Scouts is they're slow, so they eat a lot of damage. So now Rancor sitting on three bases, everything else, getting those Hydralisks out. I don't like Biagster's odds here, and as the Hydralisk count grows, yeah, that, that Scout might keep a couple of the Hydralisks pinned here, but there's still a lack of a natural expansion. Zelt leg speed upgrading, it looks like plus one weapons. Ugh, let me take this down so I can click that and then pull it back again. Plus one weapon's about, what do I want to call that? Seven eighths finished. Eight beleaguered zealots making their way out. Hydralisks going to greet them open field. The scout was hoping to get some bonus damage. It's going to get taken out of this field. And I think this is enough army for Rancor where should be able to halt. So the zealots spreading out multiple directions, trying to find a way behind all this. But unfortunately, it's just splitting up the army. And as a result, Rancor able to attack the right first, then the left, doing the old Caesar style engagement. So the Zealot's going to be gone, and that leaves not a lot of attack troops left. Range going to finish. We're going to see more Hydralisks start to group up. That's going to be continued denied natural expansion. Rancor, he can grab an additional base if he wants. This is what I was talking about. You got four gateways, which is usually the most that you can produce out of one base. And I think Rancor, yeah, already going to walk in. Yeah, he can already outproduce this potentially. Might have overstepped right this second. The Hydralis, yeah, trying to exit their way. It looks like a lot of them going to lose their lives for free as a result. So not able to close the game out just yet, but he's close in workers. Still behind a bit in supply. But with the double something colonies, he's got to feel very confident in his position, dropping another extractor. Could tech up to Spire if he felt like it. That would also be a game-ending maneuver right this second. But by extra going all in with just Zealots. Trying to make his way across. He's going for that. Yeah, just wants to get it done with Zealots. He is dropping a Templar Archives. But I don't... I'm expecting this game to be over, honestly, one direction or another, before that Templar Archives is ever a factor. Either by extra is able to breach with the Zealots and make something happen that direction, or... Rancor is just going to have a solid enough economy and he needs to be careful with these supply blocks to stay relevant or he's just going to basically be able to out macro it looks like by uh, walking down to try to grab his natural expansion so using this large army of zealots to create some map control so he can establish that one problem for Rancor continuously in this match is he hasn't been able to get units down to just hold position to keep it he's just kind of face planted with his armies typically to see what the his opponent's supply counts and etc. are. He has not yet grabbed a third base. He's going to want to do that sooner rather than later. Still behind a bit in supply. Also, I believe still behind in upgrades. These Hydralisks are fairly upgraded, but the Zealots do have leg speed. We have some High Templar making their way out. 
with that storm. Probe has managed to sneak out an open field. This actually might turn into a... This might transition to a, a macro match all of a sudden, because neither player... We'll see. I'm expecting Rancor to, now that he feels like he's got a little bit of map control, to go for a third. By Axter checking bottom left. I think he was hoping to sneak a base. There's the Spire. For Rancor. Two cannons at the Natural Expansion for High Templar. So, kind of one of those situations where neither player can really attack and do any sort of damage to either player. The Hydralisks would eat a lot of size Storm, and those Zealots would be able to clean them up in sufficient numbers. But the Zealots, if they were too far afield, Rancor with just overproduction. He's in a really good position, now dropping this third. He's locked his opponent to two bases. He's even on workers. He's 20 supply down, but still in a pretty solid position. We do have a Dark Templar being produced. One thing Rancor has skipped at all stages, uh, all stages thus far is Lurker Tech all the way around. One Corsair, but we've got six Mutalists in production. That Overlord bottom left looks like it's going to get taken out. And I'm wondering if Biaxer is going to try to be sneaky and grab some additional bases behind all of this. Single Zealot was able to tap that 12 o'clock location and escape with his life. Tell the tale. I saw Hydralisks. I saw. However, what it did not spot was the Mutalisk army. Do we have any? We do not have cannons in the back lines. So it is going to be Psy Storm and a single Corsair to try to defend all of these holdings. Let's see if some Hydralisks are able to sneak, uh, sneak their way top left, because there is a Corsair diving that direction. Dark Templar making its way up as well. Big, yeah, it looks like this is the rally point for Rancor. Corsair's got one kill. There are Overlords here. Seize the Spire. Might want to hightail it back as soon as possible, because now, yeah, gonna be able to ravage the worker lines. Maybe some High Templar are going to get picked off as well. They're moving up to drop some Psy Storm. Good split on Rancor's part. Actually, ooh, that was not great. Psy Storming his own probe line. Another great dodge. We do have an Archon that was more of two good hits. Wow, three great hits. Completely obliterating the worker line. But the Mutalisks doing immense amounts of economic damage. Rancor actually has the economic lead, but there we see a counterattack of Zealots up to the 12 o'clock. The Hydralisks out of position, and no Sutton Colonies or Lurkers to provide some support. So that's going to be a dead hatchery at the 12 o'clock. So tit for tat. Overall, the Hydralisks breaching in, and this is turning into kind of a, a fist fight. The Mutalisks able to make their way back to ward some of the Zealots back, but that's a dead hatchery. So Rancor, despite having the superior drone count, isn't able to really abuse that drone count because he doesn't have the bases to, to saturate. It's starting to flood out. Maybe go for a counterattack. Some workers way off the line. We do have a base being snuck here, bottom left, from Byaxter. The Archon and that Corsair, well, I was going to say he's going to push off the Mutalist, but the Mutalist is holding short. And one of them paying for it with their lives. Plus one weapon, plus one armor. I actually think by uh, Baya's army a little bit more formidable here, depending on size storms. Depending on that guy that's underneath the Corsair right here. Looks like he's just about got two size storms under his belt. It'll be a little while before he does. But instead gets picked. Oh, barely survives. That's actually significant. And also a Dark Templar midfield. We do not have Overlords nor Overlord Speeds, so Rancor getting frustrated on multiple fronts is going to have to go ahead and pull back. Finally making his way up to the five, or sorry, six hatchery count. Overall, just now getting Lurker Tech. But Baya, despite the early game one base play, is going to make a rapid transition with a cannon here bottom left to three bases. And is going to put himself in a... He's up... A good amount of supply. He's doesn't have the healthiest worker count right this second, but with three Nexus, might be able to make that happen. Dark Templar making sure top right isn't taken. Three base Protoss does outpace three base Zerg. And with the tech that we have here on the ground, especially with the Dragoon starting to filter in, two base, honestly, two base Protoss has been said prior, as long as you can protect the High Templar 
and get pretty good compositions that can do a lot versus uh, even three base Zerg until you get the lurkers out in the field, the overlord speed, and some other upgrades under the belt to kind of equalize things. So Baya, looking like he might be able to take this initial match. Robotics facility, morphing in natural expansion, the Mutalisks still healthy, looking to see if they can spot an army, maybe pick off this High Templar seeing things. And about to see more potentially. Uh, not, rank we're not quite able to micro, dodging Sidestorm right there, sweeping back in. High Templar loses its life, but does weaken the Mutalisks. And it looks like they are going to get wiped out between the Dragoons. It's kind of the difference between the, the mixed composition. No plus two weapons yet for these high so I don't think they're going to trade all that well. Sidestorms are also a component. Empty Sidestorm initially from Baya. Second Sidestorm not catching a lot of the Hydras as well. But Rancor's army just highly upgraded, so able to press into this fairly easily. Although, as I say that, it looks like Rancor, because those Sidestorms were expended and he kept a lot of his army attack walking back, he's getting the better of these trades. And I'm wondering how much... There's, we, we see some follow-up size from the size from just weren't there for Baya. But as I say that, the remain the next three size storms absolutely fantastic. If that was more part of the initial engagement, I think Baya would have won it. Looks like he is able to reinforce. Hydralisks looking for another engagement. Rancor definitely a provocateur likes getting in and making things happen. No Overlord support, so with the two Dark Templar out in the field, they're going to have to retreat. I think Overlord speed has been upgraded, but it is not with any grouping. Another hatchery being dropped here at the 12 o'clock rank. We're just now grabbing the top right, but Baya has been able to surge ahead and saturate the bottom left. Also, he's taking the 6 o'clock base, so in a good position to potentially take this match. Third gas being tacked on, no movement towards a Queen's Nest. Looks like we do have a second evolution chamber being dropped as plus two weapons coming online for Rancor. Corsair getting wiped out here at the six o'clock. Looks like the Dragoon's not going to be there in time. Maybe with the Psy Storm, they can evict these Hydralisks. Yeah, the Hy Ooh, Hydralisks eating a lot of damage right there. But the Dragoon's actually working against the rest of the army that's trying to make and repel. Rancor not able to get the focus fire here on the six o'clock. At least he knows it's building doesn't have much of an attack force, and right now he's at half the supply of Viaxter. So Rancor very frustrated, and a Dark Templar forcing cancellation upper right. Rancor's got a massive deficit now to try to overcome, if he can overcome it. Overlord's going to be there to at least take care of that Dark Templar, but a Dark Templar does beat two Hydralisks. So he's going to need more troops to filter in. They, well, they're holding up short. Finally able to wipe that out. But Bai has taken the entire south side of the map. Up a significant amount of workers. He's plopping down all sorts of gateways to utilize this. His mains mined out. Still puts him at three bases. Rancor has made no motions to go towards Hive Tech. He's got a good amount of lurkers. We have observers out in the field for Baya as of yet. He's been a little... Okay, we do have at least an observer in forward field. Rancor staging to blockade the 3 o'clock. He's finally moving a drone. That was a massive, massive delay right there for Rancor getting this base up. And he's going to have some trouble because he's got plus two weapons on the Hydralisks, but this is enough Dragoons and enough Zealots that are highly upgraded to negate a lot of that. So it's going to come down to the Psystorms. Maybe if he can just Psystorm dodge really well, he'll be in a good position. But Baya... Significant army lead. He just needs to start pumping out of these gateways. Keep these glowing and how, what's his count right here? So we got four or five. So that's seven, eight, nine. Needs to drop another three. Looks like he's got another one here bottom left, grabbing that gas overall. And he'll be in a fine position to just close this match out by having an overwhelming attack force. I'm wondering if we're going to see a transition. So we, we're seeing the upgrade of melee, but again, no movements towards... Lurkers. Psystorm whiffing somehow. The High Templar were leading. One of them getting cleared out. We do have some additional High Templar. There's a good Psystorm. As far as a follow-up, the Observer just out of position. Actually, the Observer... No, the Observer just making its way to the top right. They're going to make their way around that Lurker to the right. 
good engagement for Baya. He's going to start shifting more towards that 12 o'clock. Or maybe he's got that Corsair that's spotted top right. He could go ahead and attack top right. He needs to be a little bit careful about that because he's only got cannons and a high Templar. I guess he's got a decent attack for other locations. And positioning forward, it looks like Rancor not quite sure where Bayaxer is going to attack. It looks like Baya not quite sure where he's going to attack as well. Pulling back the High Templar as part of the bulk of the army. So he's threatening top right. Looks like he's just going to dedicate the three Zealots and remain on the low ground to try to engage the troops. And that's going to pay off because Rancor was looking upon losing that upper right, wanted to go for a counterattack to try to find an army stranded. It looks like reinforcements coming across, but now Baya going to be able to potentially envelop and get some additionally solid side storms on these Hydralisks and deny any sort of counterattack opportunity. Although with the reinforcement that, that were, I think, pre-rallied for Baya, creating some problems for him. And the Hydralisks continue to march down, potentially to buy some time. Secondary group there at the mid position. Diving all the way into the natural expansion. Solidly upgraded here, but there's still just... The supply is just too much. And the Scythe Storm going to be able to clean that up. There's no Overlord here as well, so that Dark Templar just needs to take... The Dark Templar need to not be lazy here, and that'll be that. And they're going to march out. And honestly, Rancor has no army, so he's got this unit composition out in the forward field, but he's got to defend, so he lost top right. He's got to defend the 12 o'clock. His main is just about mined out. He did get to Hive Tech, but, and he's getting the Adrenal upgrades. I don't think that's going to be sufficient. Especially at uh, plus three armor on the way. I guess he's decently upgraded in the midst of this. Another base, the lower base natural being grabbed. by going to reposition to engage the troops. Might, if he focus fires this Nexus, might be able to take it out. And that would be a small victory, but I still think Baya has enough where he could take out a lot else. Looks like he's going to expand top right in the midst of this. Still needs to move that army to protect the, here the bottom left. Rancor at least getting something out of this. Some time, if nothing else. Zerglings actually able to make it all the way here, bottom left. Probes having to defend themselves. They were just mining happily, and all of a sudden these crustacean-like creatures that can walk on land appear. A slew of Zerglings being created. I think Rancor's strategy from here on out is just flood Zerglings everywhere, hope that the Adrenal Upgrades is going to be able to cover and that there's not enough Zealots nor Psy Storm to make up the difference. Unfortunately for him, there's already a Zealot wall waiting and Rancor gonna GG right there, recognizing he's just too far economically behind. So Baya wins. I don't know if he advances out of this group or not. We'll have to see in the round of eight. Hope you guys enjoyed it though. Thank you for listening.